We are Microsoft. We don't just live on the cutting edge. We redefine it. Every day in what we dream up, the things we make, and the way we work. When it comes to security, we're always evolving because cyber threats are constantly changing. Look around. Some of the world's top companies are being breached daily. It's not enough anymore to build a moat around a castle or a firewall around a network. In today's client-first, cloud-first world, the internet is the primary network. People need access to applications and services everywhere, and that requires a new approach. So we're modernizing our security model to meet the challenge. Zero Trust is based on a simple principle. Never trust, always verify. It starts first with making sure you are you. Then checking to see if your device is healthy. Then authorizing access to just the resources you need. Microsoft runs on trust, but trust doesn't exist without security. That's why we're adapting to stay one step ahead, keeping our customers, company, and employees safe. Because security is not a destination, it's a journey. And we're going to lead that journey. That's what we do. We are Microsoft. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jamie Ringstad, and I drive education and awareness with our employees about our approach to zero trust. I wanted to introduce you today to my two partners in crime uh, in zero trust, Mark and Carmichael. Collectively, our jobs are to keep Microsoft's employees' identities and our devices safe and secure while making sure we're productive at the same time. So, Mark, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Jamie. Hi, I'm Mark Skarupa, and uh, I oversee the internal deployment of Zero Trust at Microsoft. And it's a big job, and there's a lot of people that contribute to this whole effort. Uh, thankfully, I've got two of my favorites with me today, and Jamie and Carmichael. So, Carmichael, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, hi, uh, Carmichael Patton. I'm our security architect within our ZT uh, core team. Uh, my focus is mostly around the devices, applications, and network security within the Zero Trust model. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you haven't noticed, we're in uniform today. Um, like other companies, uh, Microsoft Zero Trust philosophy means we don't assume any identity or device on our network is secure. We verify it. Um, and so the goal of this segment is to, to share our philosophy with all of you and a few of the, the top questions we field most frequently from customers. So I'll get going. Um, Mark, how do you think uh, Zero Trust has helped us balance keeping people secure while productive at the same time? Well, that's the great thing about zero trust is you don't have to balance. It's uh, you, you get both. And it's really important that we don't compromise in either area. And so we we look at security and productivity as as table stakes must do. And so zero trust really provides us that that framework to be able to do those things. Um, so we're, really, we look at this in two main components that that uh, provide that ability. So that first component is that employees' identities are verified, and the second is that our employees are using devices that are managed and healthy. So Carmichael, why don't you dig in on those topics a little bit more? Yeah, exactly. I think the big key. key uh, key here is the 90% of our workforce successfully working from home from a Microsoft issued or personal device. And the big piece of that is because we have enforced the management and the healthiness of that of those devices that they're enrolling into Intune and conditional access. I think, you know, it also just to sort of show the example of that 170,000 employees, we see about 115,000 iOS and 90,000 uh, Android devices. So not just the workstations that they're on, their, their Windows or their Macs, but we're also seeing their mobile devices that they're using as well. And they're enrolled and enforced just like all the other devices are. Uh, so that way they can access the resources from those devices while working remotely. I don't, you know, I don't think we can underestimate those stats. It's, it's amazing. And um, obviously, Carmichael, you mentioned internet first. I think I saw in a recent internal survey of our software engineers and principal program managers, 34% of them said they are more productive now working from home. And and obviously, we can we can relate that success, you know, uh, in part to Microsoft 365 and and the awesome cloud services that we offer. But also, I think the zero trust. Um, 
uh, we've been able to move folks off of VPN and not um, hammer that so much. And Mark Carmichael, can you give a little bit more detail on what that means? Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, a few years ago, we transitioned from a full tunnel VPN environment into a split tunnel environment. So as we've migrated out, you know, we have all of our office apps, our Teams, SharePoint, collaboration apps that we use, even some of our line of business apps that had already migrated out to the internet facing. So we don't need them to come into the environment to go to, to get to those resources. And you don't want them coming across your VPN and then back out your, your egress points, right? So having that split tunnel has minimized the impacts on our VPNs because now we're just sending the traffic dedicated to the environment in. You know, we built these big pipes to support all the other stuff. So uh, I think that was a huge benefit for us for getting the making the remote work much smoother. Totally. Um, but, you know, one of the biggest and toughest questions I think we get from customers is how do we get our people to enroll a personal device, whether it's a home PC or their mobile phone, um, especially if they've got privacy concerns or just don't want Microsoft managing their device? Mark, what would we say to that? Well, I think the key word you use there is it's a personal device. And because it's a personal device, it's a personal choice that employees have to make. Uh, we don't mandate that they enroll their device in our management system. Uh, we actually give every employee a, a Microsoft owned device that is enrolled. And that's what was intended for them to use for, for doing the, their jobs and accessing the company resources. However, we all know that it's convenient to have company resource access from our phone or our home PC. And so it's a choice. If you do want to enroll your device, we allow that. We're also very, very careful uh, to communicate what we do uh, look at and collect when your device is enrolled. And more importantly, what we don't look at when your device is enrolled. And I think that's the, the important piece. Uh, really, we have a commitment, though, to our customers and to the company to keep things safe, to, to protect them. And uh, allowing unmanaged devices in our environment and accessing our resources, it's just not a risk that we're willing to take. Totally agree, Mark. And, and I think the key here is that while we can't relent on that policy, we're also super empathetic and recognize that employees have different needs, uh, especially technology needs and things like that, right? So uh, I think, you know, one of the things that we noticed early on, we had, in our environment, we had acquired all these big, you know, development workstations for our developers that they used in the offices, these big machines with full internet connectivity and, and all that within the office. But as we transitioned home, they may not necessarily be able to take those machines home with them. So how do we get them access from their personal devices that they don't want to enroll into those environments? So using Windows Virtual Desktop jump boxes, you know, we were able to take the remote desktop gateway virtualized and have them come into the back into their workstations to actually do their day to day job uh, and give them that access that they needed to the machines that they need to develop on. I think one of the other big things that I think a lot of us around the world could could appreciate is the supply chain for hardware dried up, right? And so you either had to use a personal device or for us, we like we had a bunch of interns starting for our summer rotations. And how do you make them successful if they don't have a device that we're giving them uh, to get access into it? So using Windows Virtual Desktop, we were able to provide a full desktop environment for them so that they could actually connect in and on day one and just get running and working with their teams and make their their experience here at Microsoft super successful. That also gives us the ability then for those you know employees who just want a desktop experience to also use that as their unmanaged experience as well. I think there's a few examples of, of how we can provide that access from those unmanaged devices. I love how we were able to use Windows Virtual Desktop and pivot so quickly, especially with the interns, so that our internship program didn't have to skip a beat. And hopefully those folks watching are, are learning from that example. It doesn't matter the size or, or work group. Anyone can you know, use Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, so that was a big aha moment for me. Mark, what was yours? I think my big aha moment was just seeing how ready we were to transition from a limited work from home company to a company that was almost exclusively work from home. Um, before this, we had very few people that actually were full-time work from home. And at, at our peak, I heard we were up to 97% of our employee population actually working from home. So it's a huge shift and a huge transition. And it really goes to show that the effort and the investments that we've put in Zero Trust over the last few years 
has has really made uh, a big paid big dividends. Um, and the transition has been very smooth. Um, people were productive from day one. Jamie mentioned earlier that that I think it was 34 percent of people that were polled they said that they're actually more productive at home now. Let's be clear, I'm sure some of that is because they were not spending time sitting in traffic or running from conference room to conference room or getting stopped in the hallway. But I think we need to take a little bit of credit here on the zero trust side for some of that increased productivity as well. Uh, you know, as disruptive as the last few months have been, uh, it really has been the best validation, though, that you could ask for. Yeah, Mark, exactly. I, I think the thing that I would say here is, you know, we, we have spent a lot of time on this. And I think one of the things we, we also spent a lot of time on just literally before we started getting into this environment was building out our VPN traffic telemetry. And, and you know, we talked a little bit about how we're split tunneled. So when we sent that peak 97 percent of our employees home, now we have this really enriched telemetry that we're getting across our VPNs. Early on, we had made some assumptions that they were trying to connect back to legacy applications. And with limited data, you really couldn't tell whether or not that was true or not. But now that we have this really enriched telemetry, we can see that what they're actually connecting to is SQL databases or file shares. And being able to see those types of things through the, your telemetry that you're gathering, you're able to pivot your our, our prioritization from what problems we thought we had to what we actually do need to solve. Yeah, I, I thought having no commute would mean I'd work out more often, but uh, that hasn't been the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's let's wrap up here, guys, um, and and share our biggest piece of advice for for me from a communication standpoint. I think being as transparent with our employees and explaining to them why we're doing this why it's important and what they need to do in very succinct terms is 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 so important and can't be underestimated. Mark, what would you say? Yeah, building off of that, we talk a lot about what we call digital empathy for our employees. And really what that means is we know there's a lot of change that's happening um, and we really want to be aware of that change. And we we want to use zero trust as a way to to help empower the employees to make them more productive. And you know, we have a great example of that. We recently all but retired the use of passwords and moved to Windows Hello for Business. I, I, I personally, I love it. I get to come in in the morning, I smile at my laptop, and by come in in the morning, I mean walk over to my desk from my bedroom, but that's different. But I come in, I smile, I, uh, I get logged right in, I don't have to type in a password, and, and I'm ready to go. Uh, so not only has that helped the productivity for the employees, it's also reduced our support channels. We we have reduced the number of support tickets that we've received on password resets by 40% since the uh, the rollout of Windows uh, Hello. So people just, they, they don't need to reset their password anymore because they don't need to use that password. Now, uh, you know, it, it's it, this is unprecedented times. You know, we're going through this transition or a lot of people have never worked from home before. Uh, they're going through these adjustments. A lot of us are have now become teachers to our to our kids. We're spending way more time than we've ever spent with our significant others, with those kids, with our pets. Uh, you know, we're just trying to do our part to make the, the work element of what people are going through as friction free as possible while also keeping them secure. Yeah, Mark, I think my wife is kind of sick of me at this point being around 24-7. Um, but, but like I said earlier, I think, you know, telemetry and understanding your environment is a really big thing that, we, that everybody needs to really get a focus on. Um, but I think if you're just starting your journey, the big key is to get your identities to the cloud with Azure Active Directory. I think that that becomes your central aggregation point for everything you're doing here. Well, I just want to wrap up and say thank you for joining us. Um, we put the Zero Trust link in the window above for more questions or um, or if you want to check out more of our information. And we hope you all enjoy the rest of your Ignite.